In order to be able to understand conditional execution of code, it's good to understand how you compare things to figure out if something is true or not. So we have these conditional statements and conditional statements are, well, these if else type statements. If statements check to see if something is true before executing their code. So you can see this if true, run some code type statement right here. If it's not true, you have this other thing. You could, you could change your answer, say, if not true, and that'd be fine. Or you can do an else statement. Or in addition, you can do an else statement. So you can do, if true, run some code, else run some different code. So how do you get these true statements? How do you get these comparisons? Well, we have these operators. These operators produce either true or false as a result. So the double equal sign, remember it's not single equals, it's double equals, is the equal to operator. Less than, greater than, just as you expect, less than equal to, greater than equal to, and then not equal to. All these are your operators. So let's look at them briefly. So the equal to sign right here, if x equals five, not a single equal, it's a double equal, because a single equal would be assigning x to equal five. So double equal is checking to see if it is equal to five. So if x equals five, then we do x is five. Otherwise, x is not five. Same kind of thing with less than, x is less than five, then you can just print out x less than five. If x is greater than five, you can run that piece of code right here. If x is less than or equal to five, so that would be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and zero and anything less than that, then it would do less than or equal to five. Here we have the greater than or equal to five. Now we have the not equal to five. So X is not equal to five, then it will run this cutter here. Now, these are all your main comparisons. Another thing to keep in mind is that zero is considered false and non-zero numbers are considered true. So our last little example right here is if you do x equals five and then do if x, then it would say x is not zero. Another thing to keep in mind is if you do an x equals five with only a single equal sign, then it might evaluate that as x equals five and we're evaluating five, which means it's true, even though it's not checking to see if x is five. All right, so let's jump into some code and let's take a look at some examples. So I'm going to go ahead and write some code. So I'm going to first um, have a variable, well, um, if, maybe it's an int x equals five, that's good. And then I can do if x equals five, then I will print out this statement right here. So do this open curly brace and I'm going to print out this and then I'm going to have a closed curly brace at the end. And then I want to print out X is five. So if I go ahead and run this code, then it should run and say that X is five because X is in fact five. If I were to change this to a single equal sign and run it, it will say x is five. But what if I change it to x is four equals five? Well, and I run this again, then it will say x is five, which is not the case. And the reason, once again, single equals means that x gets assigned four. Four is a non-zero value, which makes it true. So this statement runs. So just make sure you're very careful there with that. Okay. Is it less than five? Well, let's just put the word true here because we just do it. All right. So if it's less than five, is it less than five? Well, no, X is not less than five. So we run it and we see that X is, well, not being printed out true. So let's go ahead and put in an L statement. Else, um, here we go. See out false and L. All right. So if I run that, 
then we can see that it is now printing out false. So it is not less than five. If I do greater than five, well, that one should also return false because, well, it's not greater than five. But is it greater than or equal to five? Well, that should return true. So it's true. And if it's less than or equal to five, less than or equal to five, run that and that produces true. If it's not equal to five, I can check this right here. And we can see it's true. I can also put in statements directly in here, just like with the x equals four type thing, I can just put in the number four. And you can see when I run this, it will say true. And if I put in the number zero and run this, then it will evaluate it to false. If I put in something like negative one, well, that right there should also be not zero, so it'll be true. So just keep those in mind as you are trying to evaluate and figure out what'll happen. So there you go.